All right, so I want to go over some comments. I haven't done this for a while, so let's start with Mike Moore. He says, well, a better, better question is, what was it about Goliath that really made Saul and everyone else afraid? If you study with the help of the Holy Spirit, the Bible does explain. That's right. So um, in the Bible, it talks about these giants were taller and greater, and they had cities with walls that were built up to the heavens. So I imagine that they had big buildings, big walls. They were big people doing big things. And so they were, I'm sure, intimidated by them. But I believe that once they conquered their first battle, once they fought their first fight, and they seen that they could whoop these boys, uh, I think it gave them confidence to whoop them all. That's, that's my thought, feeling on that. Um, you know, I, in my mind, in my way of thinking, these guys, they were much bigger, much taller, much stronger, but they were not as quick and not as coordinated. And so they were defeated rather handily, in my opinion. Maybe not all of them uh, exactly easily but uh, without question they all got wiped out and they conquered the land that was promised to them so uh, they accomplished what they set out to do so I appreciate that Mike Moore and now Z Mezgar asked do you know who Israel is who is the lost tribes who is Judah today all right, so I responded, Jacob is Israel. You could say all those who do not believe in Jesus Christ are lost. And there is no Judah today. Pretty simple, straightforward, I thought. Uh, then he says, uh, well, that's death wrong. Maybe you should look and see who it is. Well, all right. <clears throat> okay. Well, let's take a look. Well, I'd hate to be wrong about anything, you know, so uh, let's take a look, shall we? First of all, and if you do a keyword search, Jacob Israel, right here, you find in Genesis 32, verse 28, and he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Okay, so there we can conclude that Israel is Jacob and Jacob is Israel, right? Okay, so I can't be wrong about that, can I? So um, maybe that's not the answer he was looking for, right? And then his other question is about who is the lost tribes. Well, uh, again, we can read in 2 Kings chapter 17. All right. And I would recommend uh, you, everybody, to read this entire chapter. You know, read the entire 2 Kings, read the 1 Kings, read the entire Bible. <laughs> right. But I'm going to read some verses for you that should make it very simple, clear this whole matter up. Okay, in the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Haber by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. For it was... For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel, and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. 
And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God, and they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And they set up, I'm sorry, and they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before men, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols, whereof the Lord had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah, by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways, and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, and which I sent to you by my servants the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks, like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. And they rejected the statutes and his commandments that he made with their fathers, and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity, and became vain, and went after the heathen that were round about them, concerning whom the Lord had charged them, that they should not do like them. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, and made them molten images, even two cast, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven and the baller theory and served Baal. Huh? And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divin divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Now, if that doesn't clear it up and answer your question, nothing will, right? I mean, you can continue to read uh, and learn more details about what's happening here, but I mean, that right there, that that. That closes the case, doesn't it? Does not get any more clear in my mind. Now, if you've got some other secret Bible verses that I don't know about that contradict this, share it with me, por favor. All right, but let's let's uh, continue on this. Who's lost tribes? Who's Judah today? The lost tribes. So the lost, the lost tribes. So they. Those tribes that were part of Israel, and we just read, right, that uh, they were removed. And let's see, where am I at here? Pardon me. Right here. Okay, now about the lost. Okay, about the lost. So here in Matthew, for example, it says, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the lost sheep are those who are lost who do not believe in the lord jesus christ go out to the jews first and then the gentiles preach to them who might be saved right so that they have a preach to everybody so that everybody has an opportunity to be saved and out of those will the lost sheep come it's not a uh, situation where they're going out looking for people with big noses right or people of a certain uh, skin color your facial features your skin color your blood whether you're type a or b or o or whatever they are type z i don't know it your blood your skin your face none of that stuff is going to save you the, none of that is applied to the lost sheep the lost sheep are those who were lost or who are lost right and then who might be saved all right, so it's not the will of God that any should perish, but all should come to repentance and uh, come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. All right, so, I mean, that's as clear as it gets, isn't it? For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Okay, all the lost, 
everybody that does not believe in Jesus Christ, they are lost. There's no special group of lost people. There's not two different groups of lost people. There's lost people who are Gentiles, lost people that are Jews. They're all lost. And none of them are saved. You say there are there are black people that are lost. There are Chinese people that are lost. There are white people who are lost. Well, that's fine, but they're they're all lost. <laughs> it doesn't matter. If you're lost, you're lost, right? And the, God wants you to be saved. And the only way to be saved is by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. So, is there anything else I wanted to? Let's see where am I at here. Yeah, so he has made one blood of all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. So, they're one blood of how many nations? All nations. And how, much, how many bloods? One blood. So, there's not a group of people with different blood. It's not like a special group of blood. Like if you got the purest, the reddest blood of all men, then you're a part of a special tribe. It, I mean, this is nonsense, man. But I, I would like to hear your version and for you to back it up with the Bible and try to explain how there are different blood lines. All right? And then I, that'll give me the opportunity to correct you and show you that you're wrong. That all nations on the earth are made of one blood. And there is no special blood because your parents were born to people that had certain blood. And therefore, you have that same blood. And therefore, you're saved because of your blood. No, that's not how it works at all. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Your flesh, no matter how clean you think it is, no matter how pure you think your flesh is or your blood, it's not going to save you, period. The only way you can be saved is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. All right, and you're asking, who is Judah? I believe that was the last one. So I have that pulled up. Uh, so I'll I apologize here. I thought I had something. I can look it up real quick. This only takes a sec. All right. So we go here to Matthew 21, verse 43. And Jesus says, therefore, I say, therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, the Jews, and given to a nation, a Christian nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. All right. So now the kingdom of God is available to everybody. And then we got further confirmation of 1 Peter chapter 2. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. And holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. All right, so this is talking about Christians, not talking about uh, people of a certain skin color or a certain blood type. It's talking about believers in Jesus Christ. All right, and uh, um, I, I mean, I would like to hear your opinion. Just be honest, right or wrong. Just tell me what you think. You've given me two comments, and you haven't expressed your views. And I would like to hear them. And then I want the opportunity to correct you and to show you that you've been fooled by people who reject Jesus Christ. All right? And I, I, you haven't said it, so maybe it's not right for me to directly accuse you. But I know where you're going with this because you're saying I'm wrong when I just showed you that's what the Bible says. Okay?